we are going to start with your plan which is removing the slab here and removing the slab over there sending the camera in to search for the main line in hopes that we can actually find a connection and if we do we're just going to go ahead and pour new concrete around this reinstall the floor drain reconnect the cast iron and uh and call that a day if not then of course a new sump pump has to go in with a new line into the sump pump that's existing in the basement now this floor is asbestos so the homeowner will go ahead and remove the tile and the following day we're going to go come back in and and do concrete but the first thing we want to do is find the cast iron all right same thing happens over there we'll go ahead and go inside and look for the cast iron with the camera if we don't find it then we'll go ahead and do a new reroute install a sump pump somewhere in here bring it out now we do have a little bit of a surprise here going on there is a concrete slab right here this too needs to be removed and reinstalled for that to go under and connect to the new drain if we have a second line coming out under connect to the new drain now there's an alternative to that if you want to do that which is instead of installing a sump pump over here we just reroute it over to the wall over here and then 90 it down to this sump pump that way we don't have to have two sump pumps within five feet of each other on different levels of the house right so maybe discuss that with the homeowner i also understand that pricing is a sensitive subject but it's an idea but this slab is going to have to come out and i'm not sure if you have that one priced so uh there's that when it comes to the inside we're going to go ahead and move the sump pit a little bit over this way and i'll, sh I'll show you what i mean right now boys are showing up Corey and Nehemiah have already walked this one through with me we're looking at this pit installing a new crock and bringing it over because of that when it out of the way so we're gonna bring it over just enough right here and we're gonna run a line up and around the wall and we're gonna go in between the drip leg of that gas line so literally in between that arch we're gonna run the line through and then exit the house right around here pop go underground we debated to possibly exit the house right here, but we also have gas on that side. And we're not sure how deep it is, it might mess with our grade. So we're just gonna go under the drip leg and exit there. If you have an issue with that, please let me know. Otherwise, that's the plan. We're gonna try to get as much as we can done today. This job had to be permitted. So there's a for, there's gonna be an inspection, City of Alexandria requirements, and there's that. Next thing, uh, daylighting. As you know, there's a four inch clay over here that's currently being utilized for something. We don't know what. You've asked us to upgrade it to six inch. I can't have that line dumping on the side of the hill just before the sidewalk, because that will cause a huge liability for the sidewalk. We have to get this line to the curb. And you've seen that we have a curb, a four inch line right there. Bringing a six inch down to four inch, that's questionable. Not sure how we're gonna play that one. An idea that I had, which I'm not sure how, how much to code is it, is we install a, a pop-up drain right here, six inch, on a T, and that T being a uh, retransition back to four inch from six inch, and then we connect that T to the curb, and any overflow from that T exiting on the curb will come out of the pop-up drain right on right here by this side. I know it's a little odd, but it's the best I can come up with in order to handle the six inch transition new line coming down this way and taking it up to the curb. We cannot have a six inch day lining on the curb. Think about it, about the pop-up drain assembly with the Y on a four, and uh, give me your feedback. That's what I got so far.